You got any money? You're not holding any money, right? Okay, good. I'm just checking before we start. You got any money? Historic Trust doesn't have any money today? It might. You would have started earlier. That's good. <laughs> it's been a long time. You see him? You see him? You see him? I need a million dollars in 60 days. A million dollars in 60 days. So it's, it's nice to see you. It's great, it's great to be here with you. And the worst choice is to leave these houses here with no plan for restoration, no resources available from the federal government, from the state government, from the private sector, from the historic trust to actually come up with a plan. And so people show up at the last minute and say, oh, please don't. Well, we're moving on in the city of New Orleans. We're making action. We're making decisions that we think will restore the vitality of the neighborhood and at the end of the day, the safety of the neighborhood. So I'm here today taking responsibility, full and complete and total responsibility for taking these particular houses to the ground, knowing full well that there are thousands and thousands that need to be preserved if we can come up with a thoughtful, strategic, well-funded way to actually get it done. And so I'm calling on the historic trust. I'm calling on the preservation community. I'm calling upon the, the uh, producers of Treme. I'm calling on anybody who has resources that want to partner with us, that want to bring something other than suggestions to the table. I mean a real way because talk is cheap, right? A real way to, to make sure that we keep the things that make our culture rich up, oh, I'm all game. Happy to hear it. I got the best people in the country standing behind me who actually know how to do it. But the day is over in New Orleans where we're gonna have discussions about air. We gotta have discussions about real things. And the discussion today is about public safety. The discussion today is about restoring a neighborhood. The discussion today is about listening to what the neighbors want. You know, I'll answer, let me answer the question. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna get into the details of the conversation, but I asked, I said, David, I got this letter from you, I'm reading it. Did you mean to indicate to me that you don't want me to tear these buildings down? He said, no, I'm not trying to get in a political fight. I'm only saying that I lived in Baltimore. And he said that, you know, it was important as they redid that city, sometimes they went too far. And he said, we were just saying that it would be great if you could save them. I said, well, did you know that they were imminent danger of collapse? Did, did, did you know that they were a danger to public safety? He said, no, I didn't know that. He said, and I wasn't trying to indicate anything and I really don't want to get in a discussion. I was just simply saying that Treme is one of the, the vehicles that New Orleans has to use to remember that preservation and authenticity is important. And I said, David, of course, I agree with you. And, and what we're in doing is that we're in the balance of making sure that we maintain that authenticity that we can that doesn't threaten public safety. He said, look, we're all good. And he said, but you know, the point is simply the same. And listen, the point from my friends in the preservation community, the Preservation Resource Center has done a superb job of balancing these interests. They understand that you have to take some things down in order to save other things. It's not unlike having a patient that goes into the hospital that has a, per, a part of their body or something going on that's gonna threaten the rest of it. And you have to make hard decisions. And so one of the things that I just really struggle with, with my friends from the historic trust that seem to be outliers in this debate now, and not really in the middle or center to try to find a reasonable way is that they continue to disrespect and not understand the balance that the people in the communities really need to. This is not a theoretical debate. These men and women standing behind me, they live here. So it's not a theoretical debate about wouldn't it be nice if we restored that property when you're worried about your daughter coming home from school and having to walk. It's a real life thing. And the real life things are the stuff that we need to deal with, not just theory. And I just, just got to tell you, it's hard to balance the two things. And every now and then, you got to make a hard choice. Today's a hard choice. Not a good day to have to restrict, but it would be better if people who own these properties would take care of them. And so here goes the message again to all the people out there who own properties in the city of New Orleans, take care of them. Honor your responsibility. Get your properties back up to code. The city will be enforcing it. And this is a consequence of the enforcement. I'm here today because the people of New Orleans gave me permission to be here today. Because they said, Mayor, today is the day. You remember that? And we made the day. Here's a consequence of that decision. And, and these houses are coming down. This neighborhood's gonna be made safe. We're gonna try to put them back into commerce. We're gonna make sure these kids can walk to and from school without their parents worrying about whether they're gonna get hurt. Thank right, you all thank so all. much.